Hello, everyone. I'm excited to welcome you to today's webinar on behalf of our team at Eagle Business Software. My name is Deke Bowman. I'm a solutions consultant on our team. Today, we will be going over three apps that are part of my EBMS. My proposals, my orders, and my tasks. These are powerful and simple apps that bring the sales and tasks workflow to your desktop and mobile devices. But before we get started, uh, a few notes for our time together. At the end of the webinar, we will have a live Q&A. As you have questions, please post them using the chat icon in your toolbar. The chat is private until the moderator posts your questions for everyone to view, so you might not see them right away. After the webinar, we'll send, we will be sending out a follow-up email that will have the Q&A summary and a recording for you to view, review the, and share with your team. If you experience any technical issues, we encourage you to disconnect and reconnect to the webinar. If you're still having issues, let us know in the chat and we'd be glad to assist. Today's demo, I'll be running at EVMS 8.4, and I'm also running my EVMS 1.3.277.0, uh, and that is the general release version of my EVMS. You can find that in the App Store. And we'll be using the best team uh, com uh, company data set. It's important for you that if you haven't downloaded my EVMS, you can do that at the App Store for the platform uh, most relevant to you. So if you're looking for your Windows 10 um, device, uh, go to the Microsoft Store you can find that by, uh, it's often on your toolbar, but if not, just uh, click the Start menu and type Microsoft Store. And then if you're looking for your, for your iOS or Apple device, go to the Apple App Store and for your Android device, the Google Play Store. Uh, today, I'm gonna run through the basic setup, uh, which will include verifying the relay key and the server manager and setting up worker permissions. And then the first app we'll talk about will be my proposals. Our proposals is an app where you can create and edit sales proposals quickly through your Windows 10 or mobile device, or Windows 10 app or on the mobile device. You can add and edit product detail lines on the proposal, and you can accept and close proposals from that app. It's kind of a perfect environment for especially for those who are working with customers outside of your uh, server ecosystem. So if you'd be on the road or maybe in an alternate building, uh, it lets you interact and use these tools, uh, use EVMS in a really effective way, in a robust way. So let's uh, jump into EVMS and look at the settings. So here in Server Manager, I'm uh, on our server, we're gonna open up the settings uh, window and look at the advanced tab. Now, we just wanna make sure we have a relay key here. So I do have a relay key, so that ensures that EVMS can communicate. That's the uh, the key, the security key that uh, allows the communication. Um, so we'll click there. The other important thing to note on Server Manager is the ena enable external services box is checked. Likely they're on by default, but if you're having connection issue, you want to verify that as well. So we'll open up EBMS. Make sure we're in the right data set and log in. All right, we're gonna to go to the workers uh, screen and I'm just gonna use myself in this scenario. We'll open up my worker file and we're gonna to go to the app settings tab. So opening this up, we're gonna look at the different apps I have access to. It's important that you set this up with the appropriate app. So my BMS is, our, is my customers is the base app. Then we're gonna have my inventory, my orders, my tasks, and then my proposals. There's two elements that are important to note here is the license column. So while I'd be able to view and interact with these apps, I, I need the license to do some other uh, steps with my task, and I'll demonstrate that later in the webinar. We have all these checked, and the way you provide access to them is simply checking, make sure there's a checkbox there, very simple. So we'll click OK, and that will save uh, my permissions. Let's move over to uh, my EBMS on desktop. Again, we're here. I'm gonna log into the company data set. And if it's the first time logging in, sometimes it does take a little bit longer, um, especially if you just added permissions, uh, that it's, the sync speed can, can be a little bit variable initially. And it will often open to the most recent screen that you've been working in. So I was, uh, doing some stuff on my orders a little bit before the webinar show. That's why that opened up to that screen. 
we're going to open up my proposal. So I'm going to click that link here on the left hand side of the menu bar. And we're going to see the proposal screen. And in many ways, this might reflect a similar rendition to EBMS. So it might not be very unfamiliar and it provides a, similar, a lot of the same functionality. So everything from a search bar, a status uh, drop down, and, and how you're ordering the list. And you'll see a full list of proposals here. And this mirrors what we would have in EBMS. So if I return this back to EBMS, and I open up our proposal screen, you see the 16 or so, uh, 16 proposals we have here. And on my EBMS, roughly the same. And if we're ordering it by the, uh, since we're ordering it by quote number, uh, and then descending, if we were ascending it or flip it, check that. We can also sort by status, just like an EBMS, accepted, not accepted, open. I think if I were running, working in the proposal screen a lot, especially with the numerous proposals that you could have uh, in, in your system, in your database, um, after you've been running for a while, the open status is probably where I would live uh, and work. I want to be really engaged with those that are not yet, those deals that are not yet close. But just we have a full list. I'm going to open that up. Notice you'll see the icons here to the right side of your list. You'll have a blue check mark, which signifies an accepted proposal, a red X uh, that it signifies not accepted, and then blank. There's no icon because it's still open. You can also search. And within this search, you can search by proposal number. So maybe 117. Or you can search by customer name. So I can type Steve and I'll bring up only Steve or the proposals that Steve is part of. You'll notice there's an Ash Computer Center proposal. If I click that, you'll see that he is on the quote, the person receiving the product and Ash is the bill to. So we'll still, if you search for a customer, it's gonna search every instance where they show up on those documents. So let's open up a new proposal. And like in all aspects of my BMS, this plus sign at the top of the page is the new button. And it gives you a little new sales quote uh, detail up there. So it's gonna open a new quote and it's gonna open it on the quote screen. And this quote screen is gonna look similar to what you would see in EBMS. You're gonna have build to and ship to information, sales details, some detail lines uh, in a table or a data grid in the, uh, in the middle. And then you have a footer with the totals on the proposal. So let's go ahead and build a proposal. So in EBMS, you, you need to put in the customer ID precisely. But the great thing with my EBMS is I can just type a name and that will bring up the list. And so if there's more than one Steve, you can see Admiral Steve and you can search. I can arrow down and tab and it will automatically fill out the details for that customer. I could then change the ship to customer if I wanted to. Maybe Steve is ordering something that he wants sent to Ash Computer Center. And we put that in there in that way. So we're going to put this back. We're going to blank. And I want to actually show one more way of searching by hitting this magnifying glass. We can click that. It'll bring up a list. So you can see your full customer list, and then you can sh search from there as well. Or you can just simply click the person you're looking to add to the proposal. Looking at the sales details pane um, or block on this uh, proposal document, you'll notice two drop down menus the price level and the, the warehouse. These are in, in similar ways, the warehouse is important in EBMS. It's the, just as important in my EBMS because this is interacting directly with that data. And the price level is essential for your proposal. It will not let you save and uh, pr present an error if you don't set that. And nothing catastrophic, but it'll just notify you that you need to set that setting. So I've set these as defaults for the customer, which is always great to use the default tools that we have in EBMS. So you don't have to worry about um, some of those decisions in the moment. Let's jump down here to the data grid and add some products. So I know Steve's been talking about wanting to enjoy the nice new weather. So let's let's sell him a bike. Let's give him a proposal for a bike. So he's going to get a road bike, but I just want to search. I don't, I don't know what bikes we have in stock. So if I type in bike, 
it works like a general search and brings up the product. I can also type in the precise product ID and it will bring up that product. Or I can click on the magnifying glass and uh, bring up a list. And this would show all products or products that I'm choosing through a search. So we'll add this bike. So I click on it, fills out price, amount, description, etc. Shows I have negative two available. So you might be wondering, well, what columns are available? What features or ways can I uh, adjust this view to be best suited for my business? And just like EBMS, you can drag column widths and adjust those specs. And by right clicking on the header, it brings up a screen where you can check on and check off boxes. So let's say I want to know the price level that I'm quoting. I cl simply click that and adds the price level column. And maybe I want to know the cost of this product as well. So I'll add that by clicking on the cost and, uh, checkbox and that will add that to the screen. I can click off and I can adjust the width, make sure everything looks nice, make sure it's all the details are visible. And we have our proposal. We're not done yet. Let's go ahead and add another product. We'll add a helmet. So come here to the quantity, tab, and I'll and type in helmet. And I'm going to tab straight across. Because helmet was a product ID, I tab straight across. It immediately fills out the data. And you have the shift tab functionality go back and forth through the data grid, just like you were in EBMS. I'm going to hit Control S and that will save. You can also come up here to the ellipses and click Save Changes here. Now there are some there are some uh, saving tools that will uh, maybe prompt you to save or if you're making changes, um, just be in mind. But you want you'll want to save your documents just like you would in EBMS. Let me walk through a couple of these uh, icons over here on the left side. Yeah, by description or Kind of like the other details um, box so you can change the description this just says elite road bike and it pulls from that first product on the detail lines just like you would in EBMS. you have a memo you have internal notes just like in in EBMS, you have that next contact date and the uh, number of days the proposal is valid and whatever you have set in your settings on EBMS would transfer over here so in this data set we happen to have it set for seven days so it's bringing in seven days. If we updated that in EBMS, it would change that um, on new proposals here in my EBMS. You can then set some shipping information and you can accept or close or not accept the proposal here in my EBMS. And you can, do, you can provide dates and reasons and the approval portion in that process. So let's take a look at what this, what happened in EBMS, we have proposal 118. Let's go back to EBMS. And we're going to, I'm just going to close the proposal screen, reopen for a refresh, and we'll see we have proposal 118 down here. It's an open proposal, it has all the details, <clears throat> and we have this road bike. Now you see a list price, a regular price. I'm, I have a lot of columns showing here, but I want to come over to the unit price. and I've been talking about this for a while, so I'm going to give them a, a little bit of a discount. We're going to sell them to them for $2,000 rather than the $2,250. I'm going to save this. Uh, what you're seeing here is an error related to tax jar because of some settings we have on this demo data set. So that's not, not a concern for all of you uh, and your systems. It's uh, uh, purely context of an experimental uh, state. We're going to switch back here to my EBMS and we're going to open up that proposal. 118. And again, you can search or you can simply click here. And if I want to go straight to details, I can either click the button on the left side or click the, the title and the tile representing this area that I want to view. So I open up the sales quote and we're going to see an updated price from the change I made in EVMS because this is syncing your real life data. It's interacting instantaneously. So there we have the $2,000. So now let's look at what this appear, this ecosystem looks like in the mobile environment. 
I'll be using uh, my iPhone. So I'm going to switch to iOS. And I have my VMS open here. So I'm going to hit my proposals and it's going to bring up the search list uh, for my proposal. So I can type in the search or I can scroll down and view uh, the list here. So I'm going to go ahead and select the proposal. And we have post status, we have a description. And if I again selected that tile, it'll open up those different tiles. And I'll see the sales information on the header, the detail lines on the details, and then I can view the footer as well. And that footer will show shipping, proposal values, um, and both on the desktop and mobile version. If I hit the slider, I can see the cost, my profit margin, or the amount of profit I'm getting, and then the number of products on this. And then just in the same way that we need to interact with this, on the desktop version, I can go through on the top and tap these different links on the top and edit these different details, including the approval. So we can accept, we can close this approval. So I'll go ahead and do that here in my VMS for mobile. I'm going to accept this proposal. And notice you can do that on the proposal tab or here in the footer of the sales quote. So if I hit accept on the footer of the sales quote, it's going to run the acceptance process. Let us know that it's accepted. This is giving us again that tax jar error, which is not a problem. Proposal has been accepted. And I'm going to close that. If I go over here to the appro approval tab, it's noticed the status is now accepted. It's automatically filled in today's date. And because I didn't select an approval person, it's going to fill in the user who accepted that approval in this case. And then you'll see most recent invoice the invoice that was created from this proposal. And if I click on that link, it will open up that order here in my BMS. And that takes us to my orders. Go back to desktop. Just a brief run view over, overview of my orders. You can create, edit sales orders and invoices uh, from your Windows 10 or mobile app. This app can be used to add or edit the product detail lines on the sales document and check your payment history on the sales document and you can even re record payment transactions and then you add or update shipping information on your order. So let's take a look at how this works on the desktop app. We have this proposal open. Um, let's go to the approval tab. Oh, need to refresh, we'll close it and reopen it. Notice we have the approval. I'm going to click the link to open the uh, sales order. And then the same way you have in the proposal, you have these tiles with the different elements. You can click on the title of that tile and it'll move you to that uh, pane or that window or view. And or you can use the buttons on the side. So I go to the sales order. I'm going to go ahead and collapse this proposal since we're not going to be in proposals. And we'll open up the details. Up lines of that document. So we'll be able to see all the details here. So you have your bill to, your ship to, your sales information, and then the product details in here in the data grid. Uh, something has changed. We now have a ship column because we're now able to transact. We can ship this product. We also have your your footer, your shipping information, your sales information, uh, invoice totals, and then your balance. You can change customer by hitting the change customer button. I click on that, it'll bring up a window, uh, offering me the opportunity to change customer and then even recalculate prices based on that. I'm gonna keep this with Steve, but you can make that decision, decision by just typing in the customer name or ID or clicking the search button. So let's go ahead and ship a product. We'll ship the helmet and see what changes on this document. Our balance increases, the value on the detail lines, the amount changes. And so if we had a profit view, we would see that as well. If I hit the show cost button, we do see total markup, uh, percentage markup, and the number of products shipped. 
and this would be viewable for us. This is an item. These aren't items that would necessarily that would print on the invoice if you were printing it. So this is the sales order. Now then, when we go through these buttons on the side, we have that same description, shipping, but then we move into two unique uh, elements of the sales order. On the bottom, we have terms, and we have a payments screen where you can add a phone number. On the sales quote, you can actually record a payment. So if I click the record payment button here, and let's say Steve's gonna pay for his helmet, he's taking that home today, but he's also gonna pay more than to create a down payment for the bike. So let's say he's gonna pay us $500. We have the invoice total, we have the date, you can record a cash check or debit and credit card payment. It's important to know we're not processing the transaction, we're merely recording that a payment happened. If I click down here on the credit card, the card type, the last four digits, these are merely references for the transaction you're recording. This isn't processing that actual transaction. In this case, I'm gonna keep it with cash and I'm gonna re record that payment. So you notice here in the sales details, we have that pay payment record. If we went to the payments screen, you would see that payment record as well. And you can click on that payment and it will bring up details about that. Might take it just a second to bring that up. And you can change the date. Or not change it, but you see the date and the amount. We're going to close that. Come up back over here, over here and see the details. Uh, let's open this up in voice 1064 in EBMS and take a look. So we come back over here to EBMS. We're going to close the proposals and open our invoices screen. I search for 1064. And we'll open that up. And notice we have this payment record of $500. We have a balance, a note balance of 425 and the ship invoice total is $75 for the helmet. So again, a fully interactive system that allows you to process and work with sales transactions both here in EBMS and in my EBMS outside of your office network and in a, a wider ecosystem. So let's look at how my orders interacts with in mobile. So we have that same order here that we opened from the proposal. It's at 1064. I go back reopen it and we'll see the new balance when we refresh. So I'm gonna hit the pencil button and that opens up and that allows us to make edits and changes as well. Uh, if I hit the check mark at the top, that would allow me to uh, save it. If I X and I made any changes, it would not save those changes. And then the other box with the lines is a scanner and that would actually allow you to scan a printed sales document. So let's look at these details and let's go ahead and ship this on these items. So we have the bike still. We open up the bike just by tapping on the item on the data grid. We clicked in the shipped field and I'm going to change it to one. And I'm going to hit the check mark and that's going to save it. We have now a new balance when we look at the, the footer. And we can show that costs and the markup. And I can re record a payment here with the mobile device. So let's say I, I'm out with Steve at his, at his place and we're gonna finish the transaction. He's gonna pay me in a check We have the amount. I'm gonna put the check number. We have the date. And I can record the payment to the invoice. So now we have no remaining balance and we received the full total of the invoice. I'm gonna hit the check mark and move on. So let's say we come over here to my orders. We have this list, you can look at existing orders, you can sort by st status, process, uh, un unprocessed paid and outstanding, just like you would in EBMS. 
but I want to create a new order. I can hit the plus button at the top and go ahead and start the creation of a new order here in my EBMS on mobile. So we're going to sell bike to Ash. So we put in Ash, it fills in all of those items. And we can fill on the description, you can add details, you can change shipping items all within the app. Let's move back. Oh, well, we, are, we also have this ability to do, do this within My Proposals on mobile as well. So we're going to My Proposals, and you hit the plus button, and again, it launches a new proposal. Very similar screen. I just don't, didn't want to overlook the value of creating new documents within my BMS on mobile. When we go back to the desktop uh, screen, we can go back to the, my orders and we can launch a new order from this list as well, either an existing order or by clicking the plus sign, creating a new order. Looks like we have a bit of a lag, which sometimes happens in the communication. Here we go. A new sales document. And again, we can, it opens with the, the sales document and you just start filling out the contact or uh, customer information and you can begin adding products to that order. So we'll sell something to Bob. And we just type in his name. and add them to the sales order. Come down here to the details. Add a product, the warehouse, and let's say Bob's also gonna buy a road bike. And we're adding that to the sales order. Simple, clean, and efficient use of my EBMS. So we had a product ID error, and I'm not sure entirely why that would be. It's filling out the cost and price, so there we go. So that is my orders in my EBMS. Something I think it's important to note, both in the proposals and the order side, if I right click on a product, so if I'm, in, I can open that item, or do a lookup. So I hit the lookup, it will open up the product item. From my inventory. And that allows you to look at the details of the product and review them, even make changes if you find that necessary. It appears that my BMS is, is lagging a little bit on the sales screen here. So I'm gonna proceed with my tasks. Close these windows up. And we'll switch over to some details about my tasks. So my tasks, you can create, edit, and complete tasks from Windows 10 or your mobile app. You can clock into tasks as you work on them. You can manage your task time card straight from the app. And again, both on desktop and mobile. So we'll look at eBMS and some settings here that are available for you, that are important to think about as you're working with my tasks. So we're going to bring up me as a worker and go to that the app, app settings tab. We're gonna click on my tasks, and this is where the license is important. Make sure you have the license. When I hit properties, it's gonna bring up a query screen. So these queries are the different views of tasks that come out of the box when you load my, my tasks on my EBMS. 
and you can edit these or add new ones. So maybe I want to create a new task, uh, um, a new query that is um, from a task from a specific customer. So let me say, think about that. Add task receive. Um, and I can set a query view. And I set that query. And I select here and I can do find the field that I'm wanting to query from and then set that here in EBMS. So now that query will show up on my screen within my, my tasks. So let me show you how that's done. I'm not probably going to use you. This is 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 one um, that you'd want to play around with and, and work with. You can also look at existing queries and get examples. The out of the box queries are very effective and very useful. But again, there might be specific nuances you're looking for. Again, maybe it's types of tasks. Um, it might be uh, specific customers. Um, depends on your solution. And if you have questions about that, post them in the chat. Or of course, you can always reach out to support as you're getting into it. So let's switch over to my BMS to look at my tasks. So we'll close the orders and open up my tasks. And what you'll see is a screen where you can search for tasks. All of our screens have a good uh, search features uh, right on top. And then we'll see a list populate. We'll then be able to search for queries. So a couple of things to point out that are useful is you can sort by tasks you've created yourself. You can also include completed tasks. For me, I don't I'm not really interested in seeing tasks I've completed. Um, but I, here I can search by this query. So let's use a query we already have set up. So apparently I don't have any uh, tasks for Steve. So maybe we'll make one and see how that works. But I can look at my tasks due today, and this will show me these tasks. So I can go ahead and click on this install Nerf bars, and it'll bring up the task details. So information about the task, who's assigned to it, the time card piece, billing piece, and then advance. So I can come in here and look at detailed information. So maybe a description, instructions or notes. I can set time. So if, I've ske if I'm scheduling my tasks, I can define time to when it's a going to happen and maybe even add workers as necessary. So Notice I've added Steve as a worker. You can add multiple workers to your tasks. You have scheduled start, end, and due dates. Uh, you can set a phase if you use phases and priority. And you can confirm it if you have scheduled it. You can open up the time card. And remember when I said that you could edit your time card for task right in the app. So I can come in here and go, oh, you know, I really actually worked an hour and a half on that on that day and you can come in here and actually edit the uh, the time card entry. So I come in here and say 1.5. And it will change, update the certain stop time if I need to change that um, and it will update that time on the task. I can make certain fields wider so you have more space to type and look at. I can even change the phase if you're using phases. Well, let's say I'm just wanting to clock into the pass. I can click on the clock in here, and that will can start the timer, similar to if you're working in tasks in EBMS. This gives you a bit more control, or from that launch screen of the task, you can hit that same clock in and clock out button. So if I want to clock out, I can clock out straight from this home screen. And it's going to run the clock out process and we come back here to our time card and we'll notice an entry for today. Very simple. So let's create a new task. Hit the plus button, just like other apps within my EBMS. I select the kind of work that I want to complete. So let's say uh, it's installation or contract. We're going to build a new bike, so contract work. I'm going to select my customer.
by typing in their name. Let them show up, fill that out, build road bike. If we'd like some customizations on his bike. Spell check right in the app. Right click in like that. And we can create our task. If I want to schedule it, I hit the schedule tab and set some dates and times to work on that task. So let's say we're going to work on this tomorrow. And we're going to spend about an hour on it. So we'll work from one to two. And I'm going to save this that task and I can close that. Oh, I let me assign myself as a worker first. So search for my work, the worker, and set that there. And save changes, and we can close this. Now we can come back to our query and let's test that query. So something's not quite working right. I must have done something wrong. So let's look. We should look at the how that is set up. So I'm going to go back to EBMS and let's find out what's going on. So I'll open up my worker, hit the app settings. Open up properties and look at my query. Remove the quotes, that might be the issue. We'll save that. Go back to EBM, my EBMS. I'm gonna close this and reopen my tasks. Refresh those queries. And now we have the tasks for Steve listed. So simply adding those quotation marks, which you sometimes doing in, in the queries, depending on where you're doing that. In this case, you don't need to, you just write the appropriate ID and works just fine. I look at today. And if I look at tomorrow, I have Steve's bike that we scheduled for tomorrow. So all right here in EBMS, my EBMS. Let's pivot to the mobile app and look at my tasks on mobile. So we have back here in that menu again, putting your uh, on iOS finger in the middle of the screen and dragging over, you'll expose the menu. You can also hit the hamburger menu button up at the top whenever you see that and that will open the menu as well. Tapping on my task, I open up task list. And I can look select the different queries. So I tap in the query field and then it pops up the menu down below and I can select the different queries. I can open up that install Nerf board bar task and clock in. I can make adjustments so I can hit the pencil button and come in here. I can make notes. And the note field. I can adjust the schedule if I want to change the date that I'm going to work on it. I could add to an entry to the time card. Let's say I worked on this yesterday. I want to come back in here and make an adjustment. I can enter a start time and an end time. I can make my internal note. Installation. Right here. In my BMS and add that to. The time card. Uh, you can add billing information and notice that you always have that. If you ever see that ellipses menu in my BMS that opens up additional menu options. 
We'll come back here to the time card button. I can clock out here from the time card by hitting that button, and it will clock out and record the time on the time card. Hitting the check mark will save changes and take us back to the space screen. I can go back to my tasks and see the task list. Again, I can remove completed tasks. I can only include tasks that I've created. Very simple and flexible. Now, if we go back to EBMS, we would also see these tasks. Let's do that. We'll go back to EBMS and look at the task screen and see some of the work we've completed here in my EBMS. So if we come here and sort by, we can look at the task that I've created in my EBMS. And we can look at the time card and notice that the time, the lack of uh, small amount of time didn't register in hours, uh, but the time uh, card record that we had in there. We could also come back to the Nerf bar install and notice that we have time record there as well. So all within my BMS. So again, you can do that here as well with your new task or editing your tasks. All within my BMS. Very simple, clean, and effective. So that brings us to the end of our demo of my EBMS, specifically uh, my proposals, uh, my orders, and uh, my tasks. And I'm going to turn it over to Franz to lead us in the Q&A. I'm sorry. Uh, sorry again. Uh, thank you, Deke, for demonstrating the my tasks, my orders, and my proposals modules for us. Um, we're going to go ahead and move into our question and answer session. So go ahead and type any uh, questions right there into the chat. Um, and then also, uh, if you would like to try out these apps, uh, the My EBMS app is available in the various app stores. Uh, you will need a license uh, to go ahead and activate the app and use it. So feel free to contact us and speak with your account manager about that. Um, so just uh, take a question to start out here. Uh, is there a difference between the desktop app and the iOS and Android apps in what is displayed? Uh, good question. So what you'll see is that they are different in how they're rendered. So the desktop app is full screen. You see these recent pages um, over here on your right side that allow you to go back in time essentially to what you have been previously working on. Uh, you'll notice that when I open up my inventory and then I open up a product, it will you'll see the thread at the top will grow and that allows you to see where you are and maybe in the process of things and it lets you go backwards. So maybe I want to go back to my inventory. Um, it will take you back to that screen. So that that feature exists there. If we go back to the mobile version on iOS, you in many ways have similar tooling. So the back is that thread. Uh, this gives you access to the menu. So there is a bit of a different level of interaction, but much of the same functionality. The question is, do you want to do it with your keyboard and mouse, or do you want to do it uh, with your, your fingers or you know, your thumbs you know, holding a phone? All right, All right. And for our next question then, um, what is the difference then between the My Tasks app, Time Clock app, and My Time? Yeah, great question. So the Time Clock app is going to clock you in and out of daily hours. Uh, so the only purpose of it um, is to, uh, and I would show you up in that the header piece on the time card. It was it's the, the daily hours alone. Now you can set um, my tasks to clock you into daily hours when you clock into the task, similar to my time. 
uh, clocking into a task uh, is purely starting to record um, the time spent on that task and we record that to the time card of the task and as such the worker who completed that time. Uh, differentiated from my my time. Uh, my time is a, a, a fully featured app. It has a lot of functionality. Um, it allows you to do uh, a, some more robust things at this point. However, as my tasks evolves, there might be a, even more crossover um, between the tools. Uh, the differences are my time is a Windows uh, app only. Um, my task does allow you to uh, work on tasks from your mobile device. Uh, also, uh, I think something that's useful or helpful to think about between my time and my task, again, they kind of were designed with different purposes or different contexts, and, um, but my task is part of this larger suite of apps. So it allows you to maybe interact with some of these other tools in a way that feels a little bit more seamless. Okay, so the next question here has to do with uh, printing and also emailing. Uh, let's say we want to print a receipt because uh, we made a sale um, in my EBMS and we want to print a receipt. Or let's say we're on the proposal and we'd like to send the proposal for a customer to review and approve. Yeah, great question. So if I open up my proposals and I open up uh, one of these proposals that we created, You'll, there was a, um, a tab that referenced auto send and you, um, this would go into the same auto send uh, tooling that you have set up. So if you have um, items that you'd want to email. Let's see, here we go. So you can mark this as to be sent um, and that would um, be a notation there. Uh, in terms of printing, we don't have a print button built in uh, to print from my BMS. That is a good question and uh, something we'll note and we can give you more information back uh, on that in the Q&A. Okay, so for the next question, uh, we all have uh, cameras on our smartphones and tablets and some of our computers have webcams and we know we can scan the uh, barcode in uh, my inventory. Could we also attach uh, pictures like to a sales order uh, using my EBMS? A great question. Uh, currently, we do not have that feature or tooling available. Um, but we can note that as uh, something of interest to explore for future development. OK, and then uh, for our last question, um, just have a, qu a question here. It's just asking, are all three apps available on the desktop? Uh, yes. So my proposals, my orders, and my my tasks are all uh, native to the, the desktop app, uh, and they all work very cleanly and nicely together. Yeah. Yep, and you can find, if you're running a Windows computer, you can go ahead and find that My EBMS app in the Windows Store, and then you the modules you're licensed for will appear in that left column. All right. Uh, well, this go uh, this concludes our question and answer uh, session, and I will hand it back to Deke. Thank you, Franz. Um, we're glad that you were able to join us today uh, for this session, and I hope you, we have uh, equipped you on how to better use these tools in your workflow and to uh, um, add to your capacity in running your business. If you have questions that were not answered, please reach out to support or your account manager. Uh, note on the screen, uh, we have upcoming webinars. On June 9th, we have our next webinar on job costing, uh, which should be at 11 a.m. Eastern time. And check out our events page at ecobusinesssoftware.com slash events for details on that webinar and a reserve spot, as well as our other upcoming webinars. If you have any more questions, feel free, feel free to reach out to our support team or your account manager directly, and we'll be happy to help. Thanks for joining us.